All right, with the DR-10 today, we're gonna to talk about the Macklin system and what I'm running, gearing, uh, set up, show you how to go through data login, use the GNSS with the data login to help your tune and stuff like that. So, got the DRK Real Street Edition ESC. This comes with it in the box. And one thing I do want to talk about here, you may want to pause it and read that, but when you first get it, you definitely have to calibrate it. There's videos on YouTube for that. It's easy to do, fine. The motor limit is a two pole, three and a half turn. This ESC does not support four pole motors. Originally when it first came out, it didn't. Once you get it, do the firmware update, it unlocks a four pole system and set up for it. Um, if you run four pole and two pole system or setup, you're probably gonna wind up burning something up. So that's one thing to do. Uh, you have to unlock the ESC to get the four pole setup. That does void all factory warranty. But when it comes to racing, you can't really warranty something that's going to be abused and go through a lot of power in one pull. Um, it's like buying a real 3,000 horsepower engine. There's only so long it's going to last before it finally lets go. So that's no reflection of bad quality on the company. It's actually a great company. Uh, great customer service. They email back quickly. Uh, give you all the information you're looking for because uh, there's certain type of gearing that you want to have to stay within on your final drop. With ESC on the card, they recommend on a three and a half turn a 17 by 87 or on a four, four and a half turn a 1987 spur and pinion. So when I first got it, you know, my initial thought, if this is the power system, I need to stick with that. That's completely wrong, because once I started looking into the 6600KV four pole, I'll open it up and show you the packaging it comes with. They recommend, with this motor, a final drive of between a 7.8 and a 8.2, I believe. So, and to get that final drive, you have to know your transmission ratio, which on the DR10 is a 260. Um, to get your gear ratio with your spur and pinion, you take the spur tooth count, divide it by your pinion, and that gives you that ratio, and then you multiply it by your transmission ratio. So it comes down to about a 3.0 gear ratio on the pinion spur to hit the 8.2 conservative that I was wanting to be at. Uh, of course, you can run any gear you want. That's just suggesting through them. And of course, I wanted to stay with what they suggested. All right, let's talk about setting up the ESC. When you get it, hook up your spot USB cable to your ESC, you hook it to a laptop or computer, it'll power it. If you need to run a tablet, you gotta get a, a conversion cable, no problem. Firmware update, be the first thing you do. I've already did it, and we were talking about final drive ratio earlier. They recommend a 7.9 to a 8.3. So, but you go ahead and download that. And after you do any download, firmware updates, anything, recalibrate the ESC every time. Programming. What I did is I started off in blinky mode. And you see here, you got motor rotation. That all depends on if you're running mid motor, rear motor. Make sure you're on four pole if you're running a four pole. 
protection settings, I turn them on to 180 degrees and 6.4 volts. Most people keep that turned off. Launch power control. Well, what I started doing here is I started at first stage 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70% all the way through. And then I doubled their times. So I had 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. And then I slowly started bringing in 100% and then started slowing down the shift times, bringing them in quicker. So now, once you get a consistent setup, you can export it. And disregard that. Anyways, it brings up, you can label it whatever you want, save it. It's always going to be there. So next time you want to import it it will be overwritten my fastest one 249 at 61 it's already in ESC ready to go so right now we're in drag unlimited mode I still got all the other settings but now we're adding timing boost and turbo and all that good stuff so this is where the real power starts coming in all right using the GNSS with the data logging on the Macklin system. Go in here. This is my last run of 250 at 57 miles an hour. 1.49 G's. The graph does kind of show you good things here. Shows you where it starts falling off, but it's not very detailed. But you can click share. Save it to Excel. And then what you can do is you go in, it opens up like a spreadsheet. And from here, you can actually see by the tenth of time what the GNSS is reading. You can compare your speed with your RPMs on your data logging. And then you can just see where you can add power, take power away, and all that stuff. I don't have any data on my logger. I reset it. Um, so I can't really show the comparison there. But with these two combined, you can really dial it in. All right, this is where the GNSS gets interesting looking at the times. People that race, um, they say that the GNSS is... 0.15 to 0.2 seconds slower than an actual speed trap and if you look everything is by a tenth okay it's showing that it stopped recording at a 2.3 second run but if you look it says I run a 2.5 as my fastest time so which one do you go by I typically just go by the one that I can screenshot and show everybody but if you look into this instead of 250s that might be at a 230 it's hard to really know now with all those tools that you have at your disposal you can definitely dial it in uh, it makes it a lot easier once you start figuring it out. Start slow, work your way in. There's no reason to rush. It's always easier to add power than to take power away with your trigger finger. So enjoy it. Don't turn it into a job. Do it slowly. And do one setting at a time. That way you can keep up with the chassis with the power you're putting into it.